Yes. Perfect. <sighs> David, you get extra points for being on time. Early, <laughs> early even. Extra points. David, um, how did you find out about this event? The internet, I imagine. From your Twitter, ow. Ah, love. <laughs> we love Twitter. <laughs> In a few minutes, we'll ask you, you know, like if you're a podcaster already, all that kind of stuff. So just uh, giving you a little insight into the future. Curious about who you are, you know, all that. Oops. Hello, level up. Welcome. Music would be a nice touch. We'll do that next time. <laughs> Don't For make sure. me sing, you know? I think there should be a name behind level up as well. Level up, if you want to tell us, uh, if you want to rename yourself so that we know who you are so that I don't have to call you level up, that would be lovely. Unless, <laughs> of course, your name is level up. Um, uh, Varun, okay, Varun. cool. Welcome. Varun, where are you joining us from today? And am I pronouncing your name correctly? Please feel free to let me know. In the chat or out loud, however you prefer. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm from uh, London. Nice. And am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, yes, that's correct. Varun. Varun, okay. Can do. Okay, we're going to ask you to stay muted for a bit. And in a few, we'll have some, some more time for chat. We're going to be utilizing the chat feature pretty heavily, though, um, for some responses and to figure out who you all are. Thank you. <laughs> All right. In a minute, we officially open it up. You two get extra points for being early. And, um, and then we'll get started a few minutes after that. How's everybody feeling on this Friday? For, for you, Varun, it, oh, for you in St. Paul, Minnesota, thank you for waking up very early for us, David. I guess it is, it's, it's nine. I guess it's not that early. Or is it eight? I never know. Central time, Midwestern time, it's a whole different world out there. Anyway, thank you for being here. And Varun, it's early afternoon for you? Yes, it is. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you tuning in from? I'm in New York. Okay. Hello, CM. Who are you? Feel free to, uh... oh, got a lot of people jumping in <laughs> at this time. Welcome, everybody. My name is Ariel, and I'm here with my partner and friend, Sashwat Sahu. And Hello there. We are about to party and tell you about podcasts. <laughs> um, as you're joining us, please feel free to let us know in the chat where you're joining us from. We'd love to get to know you a bit, and we'll get started in a few moments with um, telling you about podcasting, podcasting cats thought leaders, and um, why, why podcasting is important. Um, Ram Sri is from Hyderabad, India. How far is that from you, Sashwat? It's, uh, I think, overnight journey wow. and uh, by flight, just an hour away. Nice. Ram Sri is act actually our Maven um, coach, uh, instructor as well, fellow cohort member. Love it. Well, thank you for joining us today. And of course, we've got Josh Dudley, who is a Twitter friend of mine. How are you doing, Joshua? Please feel free to let uh, us know. Hey, fantastic, Ariel. Uh, sitting out here uh, in my car. Um, it's an uh, alternate side parking day in New York. Ah, love it. <laughs> great, great reason to be in the car. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we're going to get started in a few minutes. Um, we're going to ask that, so just so everybody knows, we are recording this. Um, so that we can 
use this uh, information that we share later for promotional purposes, or if it's really, really helpful, maybe more people will be interested in the information. Um, but we'll get started in a few minutes. Welcome to everybody who is joining us. Please feel free as you're joining us to let us know where you're joining us from in the chat. And um, we'd love to we'd love to hear from you. I'm just going to pull up all my information and then we'll get started in about two and a half minutes is is what I'd say. That's hey, your Raph. estimated time of arrival. I see another on deck fellow, Raf Grico. He joined us from Switzerland, I believe so. Hi, Raf. Hello to you. Thanks for joining in. I see Neha as well. Neha is a mentee from my Spotify podcast lab uh, cohort as well. So oh, hello nice. there, Neha. Yeah. Hello, Satyoki. Old friend Pune, of mine. India. Very cool. All right. All right. We've got people from all over the world. We've got India, London. We've got the US in various places throughout the US. Really glad to have you here joining us from all over to learn about podcasting. Sash, what, what podcast have you listened to most recently? Oh, I think um, Henry David, uh, um, I think the Shantaram one, right? Gregory David. So he released his podcast sometime in March and April. So he was just talking about his story um, arc, how he was building his story back then about Shantaram. And uh, yeah, it is just, it's not a very nicely edited podcast, but it was <laughs> lovely to hear actually. Yeah, it's, it's just like 10, 15 minutes of random discussions. He just picks up a bunch of questions here and there from his listeners and just answers them. But it's a good one. Love it. What about you? I was just listening to The Daily. It's about the crisis at the Belarusian border today. Intense stuff. Oh. I will finish it after our hour of uh, podcasting for thought leaders. So what about <laughs> you folks? What have you listened to lately? Are you a podcast listener? Are you a podcaster? We'd love to hear from you in the chat. And we will read your answers aloud as we wait for a few more folks to join us. Podcaster, podcast listener, both. I am both personally. Um, I make a podcast about podcast recommendations and yep, a lot of both, a lot of both people. Varun is both, Neha's both. And um, I listen to like 35, 40 hours of podcasts a week. It's really, it's like a job. Ooh. It's like a job. <laughs> All right. So why don't we get started, Sashwat? How do you feel? Yeah, sure, Ariel. So, um, and uh, of course this will be recorded. So a lot of folks who will be joining later on can, can get this particular video at a later point in time as well. So hello everyone, good morning, good evening, and um, uh, good afternoon as well from wherever you are joining us. And uh, my name is Sashwat Sahu, uh, a little bit of introduction about me. I run a podcast called as SaaS It Up, primarily to a lot of SaaS investors, operators, and entrepreneurs from all parts of the world. And it is one of the most loved SaaS podcasts. I've been um, embedded in the SaaS ecosystem in London, as well as uh, uh, Silicon Valley uh, via the OnDeck and Saster networks as well. And uh, yeah, I just started off my season two, and that's when I had to be part of the Maven Accelerator, where founders of Maven were coaching us, both me and Ariel, and happened to meet Ariel via our on-deck ecosystem as well. So that's a little bit about me. And uh, out here in Spotify India, I've been actually mentoring a lot of early stage podcasters to start their first season, primarily. I love a lot of uh, business podcasts, to be honest but uh, I'm very gung-ho about the audio space. So that's about me. Over to you, Ariel. Sure. Uh, my name is Ariel Nissenblatt. I am the Squadcast community manager. Squadcast is a remote recording platform that helps podcasters record in studio quality from wherever. I also am the founder of Earbuds Podcast Collective, which is a weekly podcast recommendation newsletter and podcast. I've been running that for five years. I am obsessed with podcasts. I just think that they will change the world and help us all become better listeners and therefore better citizens of this planet. And that is why I want more people to listen to podcasts, but also to make podcasts. And that is why I'm here today with Sashwat. And basically what we're going to do here for you today is tell you all you need to know, all we can tell you in one hour about the podcasting landscape and how you can become a podcaster if that is something that's interesting to you. 
um, and we'll give you a general, the, the bare bones of how to do it. So without further ado, oh, and then I guess all this is leading to um, in January, Sashwat and I are doing a five week course. And if you're interested in applying, we'd love to have you. And I will put a link in the chat. Obviously no pressure, just wanna give you that option. And with that in mind, Sashwat, why don't we kick it off? Absolutely. Thanks, Ariel, for the wonderful introduction. And hello, everyone, once again. A little bit of uh, context as to where we are all pro you know, going towards the audio ecosystem as well. Uh, podcast, uh, podcasting has been there for so many years, more than 15, 14 years. People have been listening to a lot of podcasts, and it was really made famous by Steve Jobs as well. But for the last two and a half, three years, there has, there's a major spike that really took off. And I will just give you a little bit of insights as to where the next four or five years in the audio ecosystem will be taking off. So uh, when you look into the first pointer, you will realize that audio is really going in a different trajectory altogether. May 2019, uh, Google really made this announcement that they will try to have the rankings of all the podcasts available in the Google search index as well. The first pointer was voice search optimization. So it's a little bit geeky term, but what will happen in the coming years is that uh, what was there back in 2005 when really Google was trying to do a lot of crawling and get a lot of uh, stuff uploaded in their search engine uh, in the 2021 and beyond era, a lot of your podcasts and your voice messages across your all digital channels will be searchable via Google and other search engines as well. And those will be reflected in all the IoT devices that get connected via the uh, Google API as well. So voice search, search optimization is really taking off. And uh, if in 2020, you do not have a voice presence on the internet, you will really miss out on a lot of opportunities that are uh, about to come. The second one was uh, uh, podcasts will appear higher in SERPs. So 20, 2017, 2018, folks were really confused. You know, the podcast, they were minting episodes after episodes, but they were not really getting searchable. People were not able to find it. And the number of listens and the downloads were taking a very linear path. What's happening in 2019 and 2020? Of course, the pandemic has really accelerated the digital uh, podcasting landscape. But in 2021 and beyond, it will be really available in all the SERP rankings as well. So when the podcast will appear in higher in SERPs, eventually a voice message on the digital landscape will be much more of higher value as it was pre-2019 as well. The third one is about internet of voice. In your homes, of course, a lot of people would be using Amazon Alexa, Google Echo, and a lot of other IoT devices as well. But there are rise of voice commands that are coming up as well. So what will happen is that your podcast will be available in a lot of workflows of other digital uh, channels as well. For example, if you are trying to order something from your local grocery, today you may be using, let's say, Amazon or maybe an another platform or an app from your phone. Tomorrow, what will happen is that you can actually order a bunch of things within, within your home and they will be converging or you know, having those uh, API conversations between themselves as well. So IoT was always a play, but um, internet of voice is something that's coming up. So when you have a presence, an audio presence on the internet, podcast being one of it, maybe you will have a bunch of other presence as well. Those will get interconnected at a later point in time as well. The rise of social audio. Of course, Clubhouse was a major, major, um, you know, uh, it's not an innovation. Uh, there were a lot of platforms that were really created back um, in 2016, 17. But the timing for Clubhouse was really nice. Uh, we were all stuck in, our, in the pandemic in our own uh, bedrooms or homes. So what happened was that we tried to consume a lot of audio content. So apart from Clubhouse, there are another 21, 25 uh, apps that are available. There are like social apps like Colin, Wisdom, and these kind of apps are really accelerating the um, uh, social audio um, uh, landscape as well. Uh, many people predicted that the social audio landscape is um, uh, going uh, in, it's taking off, but it's just a fad. But uh, my prediction is that for the next two to three years, it will really take off and there will be a lot of consolidation happening as well in the social uh, audio landscape. So besides the follower counts and the expertise that you actually bring in, 
there will be a lot of people who will try to listen to you, you being the expert, you being the creator in, in real time, in live uh, formats as well. So that's something uh, we all need to be really focused on. And the last one is B2B SaaS companies are really doubling down on the, on the um, uh, audio space. So every other B2B company, whether it is Slack or Salesforce or even Squadcast or any, any company that has subscription layer attached to it, are trying to build their own podcasts and they are uh, trying to double down on a lot of things that are going to the voice medium itself. And the third part is a lot of ED houses are now getting created within these enterprise um, uh, um, houses as well. So today, these companies are, let's say, a million-dollar companies going towards a billion-dollar companies over the last two, three years. But eventually, in the next four to five years, a lot of media houses will be created within the SaaS companies as well. Now, that's a prediction that is available in a bunch of uh, VC networks. Uh, Matthew Ball is one of the amazing uh, VC who has given an amazing prediction back in October um, about the rise of the audio uh, you know, platforms and uh, and um, uh, devices as well. Okay, so um, I'll just uh, touch upon a little bit of um, the ABCs of podcasting. And A definitely uh, stands for finding your, um, um, your, uh, you know, your niche. So if you are starting a podcast in 2021 and beyond, then preferably try to double down on a particular area that you have expertise in. You may do a candid banter, that's absolutely fine. You can be a next Joe Rogan as well. But um, if you really are focused in a particular area, then you have a higher possibility of success in 2024 and beyond as well. So try to find a niche that is really uh, you know, resonating with your expertise as well and go all guns blazing. And the second one is um, being, having a great audience as well. Now, cohort analysis is a very jargonish or MBS, MBA-ish um, thing, but uh, every, every podcaster who server starts off needs to understand who their target audience is. Of course, uh, in your first few seasons, you would not know who your target audience is because there's a lot of you know, pivots that will uh, take place, but eventually you will do a little bit of cohort analysis and really know what your um, uh, target audience is. And that's when the magic happens. Once you really know who your cohorts are, you will double down on the content um, as well and you will have better listens and downloads. And of course, Ariel is a great podcaster. I'm a fan of Ariel and she's a good friend as well. And uh, so together, Ariel and me decided that why not start a community or a particular course um, around, around uh, the audio sphere itself. And that's why we named it as Audio Lab. Lab because we will be doing a lot of experiments and uh, you will know how these experiments will really impact your understanding around the audio uh, ecosystem as well. That's the A of uh, podcast. Uh, definitely, you need to have um, you need to be really focused on the attention economy. So people, so so a friend of mine really joked. He said that we our ears are always open twenty four seven as opposed to our eyes. So what happens is that a lot of companies and enterprises are looking for your year share in the coming years as well. So oh, that was a <laughs> funny thing. Year and years. So the B of podcasting is that um, you are trying to set up uh, your personal brand. And along with that, you are trying to create a brand for your podcast. Whether you are an indie podcaster or you are a podcaster within a particular company or an enterprise where you are trying to do within that corporate scheme of things, you are trying to create a brand uh, via the medium of audio. And brand architecture states that you cannot create a brand uh, overnight, right? It takes a lot of multiple touch points to really you know, have your uh, brand architected. So uh, if you are a podcaster, then definitely be very clear uh, how you are trying to position your brand. And especially you might have to do a little bit of uh, digital cleansing of your past and a lot of other digital footprints to clean up your brand before you start your podcasting journey as well. Then B for books. I'm an avid books uh, lover. I read a lot of novel novels as well. Uh, last week, I found a news about Spotify buying a bunch of platforms that are really going big on uh, audiobooks. So 2020 will be an exciting year for audiobooks. Uh, apart from the audibles of Amazons of the world, you'll find a lot of platforms that are really going long on audiobooks. 
And uh, if you are a book lover or if you are a blogger or if you are a digital content creator, then eventually there's a high possibility that you can actually merge a bunch of episodes of your podcast and create it as an audio book as well. So we'll help you out with uh, the process around uh, creation of audio book as well. And the third one is the business of podcasting. Many of the podcasters since, um, uh, you know, 2012, 13 have been telling that, you know, the first few seasons after few first few seasons, they have a pod fade and they get demotivated as well because they are not able to monetize it. But uh, we have uh, gone deep into the business of podcasting. Apart from the sponsorship layers, the subscription layers, we actually understand the business model of podcasting. And that's a very unique insight that we bring with years of expertise that you've got and having spoken to some of the industry exper experts across multiple geographies as well. So if you are trying to start a podcast or you want to double down on your audio journey in 2022, you are actually at the right time. And I will really you know, plead everyone to really think, think it through early on in the first few months and thereafter go with your amazing journey. And the C and the last C of podcasting, which is very interesting, is community. Um, I'm part of a bunch of communities, uh, podcasting communities as well, that are helping me in my podcasting journey. And um, a community is like just not a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, support system network, but it is, it is a set of people who are within your own cohort, eco cohort as well. So what happens is that they are facing the same challenges. They are um, aware of the problems that you have already faced. They are experts in some of the areas that you might be touching in at a little point in time as well. So if whosoever wants to start a podcast, uh, preferably has to find a community. And I think um, uh, Alex Lieberman rightly uh, mentioned in one of his conversations that uh, without your community, uh, you just have the content and that is just a commodity. So you will have to wrap your uh, community around your podcast as well eventually. Now, the last uh, few of the other Cs that I absolutely love is creator economy. I mean, it's VCs are really long on the creator economy since the pandemic happened. Uh, 2020 was a massive, how do you say, um, investors, investors were very bullish on a bunch of uh, creator platforms. Uh, a lot of convergence is happening around the creator platforms as well. So what you will realize in 2022 is that the, a lot of episodes, a lot of podcast APIs will get embedded within a lot of other creator platforms as well. So tomorrow, if you are trying to start a podcast in a particular niche, then you might even try to create a DAO, which is like a decentralized autonomous organization. And uh, you can really wrap your offering around, around it as well. So um, uh, I'll share a bunch of uh, details around uh, creator economy at a later point in time as well. We have cohort and a bunch of uh, other Cs as well. Content is the king. You have to have your creative lens on and definitely um, you need to have the chemistry with the content and with the people that you try to engage over the content in your podcast as well. So if you have a co-host, then preferably have the chemistry checked up early on so that it's, it's a good conversation that people really love to listen to. And, um, uh, and when you start off with your uh, podcasting journey or you, if you are an established podcaster, but you will, you will definitely face a lot of competition going forward as well. Those were uh, some of the um, uh, Cs. Of course, there's a lot of cost attached to that. And um, moving ahead. This is a one-stop uh, slide for understanding the content landscape. Uh, if you are trying to create content, of course, you would have heard about a lot of um, uh, tools that are there on the slide. Zoom, TikTok, Colin, Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, Substack, and many more. Uh, but when you are actually going for a lot of content editing, then preferably you will be uh, touching on tools like Desc Descript, Audacity, GarageBand, Pro Tools, Canva, etc. Now, content distribution and monetization, there are a lot of uh, tools, which, of course, Ariel is an expert in. She will uh, share in detail. Uh, you have Spotify, Google Podcasts, um, Patreon. Patreon take, takes a little bit of cut from your uh, revenue earnings as well. YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Deezer, and Breaker, etc. Now, the good part of, um, uh, uh, you know, community uh, of a podcast, I mean, you can check out Podchaser, Reddit, there are 100 plus podcasting communities um, uh, uh, 
on Facebook as well. Spodcast has an amazing community as well. But uh, many folks have researched and, re- and they have realized that CBC communities are really, really strong in the long run. Why? If there are a bunch of 25 or 30 folks who have joined in for a definite period of time, for a month or, uh, or for two months, etc., you really have a stronger bond within your uh, cohort members as well. So if um, uh, like, like I and Ariel happen to meet in one of the similar CBCs as well, and we realize that whenever you are there uh, in, a, in a time-bound equation for like four weeks or six weeks, you really have these strong bonds. And these bonds really come handy at a later point in time when you are going ahead with your fifth season or you are trying to get partnerships, et cetera, as well. You get a lot of help from your fellow podcasting friends as well. Content discoverability is is about um, uh, search engine recommendations. And there are a lot of um, uh, social platforms that will really try to embed embed the uh, podcast episodes, the podcast names, the visual designs, the cover art of the podcast, et cetera, in their, in their canvas. So 2022 uh, is a very ripe time to be in the podcasting landscape. And uh, because the monetization options are really opening up across the world, you will see that um, you are in a good space to actually monetize your content going forward. Uh, and in the future, of course, there are IoT devices, and um, I've spoken about Amazon Alexa, Google Echo, etc. And the last um, note that I'm really, really bullish about is a lot of our digital sales motions, marketing motions, HR motions will try to embed uh, podcasts and voice snippets uh, within their workflows as well. So tomorrow, whichever tool that you are using on your mobile phone or maybe on your laptop, you will realize that there will be a voice touch point as well. So there were, of course, uh, image and video were the popular mediums, but from 2020 and 2021, I'm very, very bullish on the medium of audio as well. So that's it from my end. Uh, Ariel, over to you. Hello, everybody. I know Sashwa just told you a lot. So we're definitely gonna be leaving time at the end for questions. So if you've got them, Hold on, and we're leaving time, so no need to no need to rush. Um, so I think Sashwa just gave you a really great overview of the landscape of of podcasting, of audio, of all of that. What I'm going to talk about now is how to actually make a show. A lot of people they say, "I have an idea for a podcast. How do I actually make it happen?" Or, um, you know, I have a co-host, and we really want to make a podcast, but where do we record, and where do we upload that, and how do we get it out into the world? So it would help me if you would let me know in the chat what stage you're at in terms of your podcasting journey. Do you have a podcast? Have you had a podcast and maybe you're thinking of relaunching it? Um, Do you know somebody who has a podcast and you want to help them with it? Would love to know. So Varun is relaunching. What else do we got here? Pre-launch for Lais. Shout out to Lais, by the way. Um, Sashwa and I met through On Deck and Lais is the is in charge of one of the cohorts at On Deck. Um, I did the community building cohort and Sashwat did the podcasting class. And um, then Sashwat and I got connected just for a little bit of context through the larger CBC world. And I think um, some folks might not be familiar with what CBCs are. It's cohort-based communities. Is that right? This is kind of a, a, a term that is becoming more and more popular. Go ahead. No, it's, it's similar, actually, cohort-based courses. Courses, yeah. So, yeah, one of, the, one of those words that it's important to know, but it becomes, it, it becomes um, an acronym, and then we kind of lose the meaning. So we met through a course that we will later be teaching, a course in a similar style, a CBC, a cohort-based community. I missed it again. Anyway, we're going to be teaching a course, and it's going to be cohort-based. And that's it, cohort-based uh, cohort-based course. Um, Lots of people here, you have a talk show podcast, um, a podcast planning to launch two more for one company I'm an investor in, awesome. Okay, so let's talk about how to make it happen. This might be 101 for some of you, but it might be a great refresher for you as well. So whenever I advise people on starting podcasts, I tell them to think about what the format of the podcast should be. And I am a big fan of having a lot of consistency when it comes to your podcast. 
So I think it's great for your show to have an intro, the meat of the show, and then the outro. And I think you should do everything in your power to keep it that way. Always an intro, the meat of your show, and then your outro. However, if you need to diverge from that, the next thing to think about is transparency. Letting people know why this episode is gonna be different from the others for whatever reason. And it's more than okay for that to happen. In fact, it actually keeps your audience's attention. But if you try to do it without letting them know that this episode is gonna be a little bit different, you're gonna lose their trust. So you wanna give them a reason to trust you and that is being very transparent. And the transparency also extends to your audio quality. So I am a big fan of getting the best audio quality possible. That's why I work for Squadcast, which makes it so that you can record really high audio quality. It's Squadcast is known as a cloud studio. There are other cloud studios out there like Riverside and Zencaster. Um, there's a few others as well, and they're all really great because what they do is they prioritize the actual recording. A lot of people will record on Zoom or Skype, and those just aren't optimized for you. So your audio is going to sound like it has internet glitches in it. So you really want to choose a platform that's going to make you sound good. And right now I'm talking about remote recording, but of course there are options to record in person in physical studios. That kind of feels like it's gone out the window since this, uh, since this whole pandemic started, but in theory, you can head on back to a physical studio in some places nowadays. The only limitations are that you have to record with people who can meet you in person. So I really think we're kind of making a bunch of predictions about the future. I think that we are not going back to a time where most people are recording in person. I think remote-based recording platforms are going to be taking off and staying really relevant. So um, you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to your guests in that way. So choose a format, stick with that format. If you don't stick with that format, let people know why you are diverging for that week or for that month or for whatever it is. Your co-host, like Sashwa touched on a few moments ago, is really important. I see a lot of people posting in these Facebook groups online, like, I have a really great idea for a podcast. Does anybody want to be my co-host? That's a recipe for disaster. You're not friends. You don't know each other. You're just asking for somebody to co-host with you. It ends up being a really weird transactional relationship. You're going to have some creative differences. I think the best thing to do is if you have a show idea and you think that you are the right person for it, you're probably the right person for it. And if you find somebody naturally who is going to, um, who's going to compliment you in that way, great. But I think um, you really want to be careful about who you're choosing for your co-host, because I have seen some examples of people that they need to drop their first co-host and find somebody else entirely. But then the podcast in the way that it started is not the way that the second co-host is interested in. So it really depends. Every advice that I give is going to is going to come down to it depends on your individual situation. But ultimately, you need to be confident enough in your product to say, I am the right person to tell this story or to interview these people about this subject. Then it comes to the segments of your shows. Um, like I said, I really like an, a clean intro, meat of the show, outro. Of course, that's more for like an interview show or for my show, I, I host a podcast um, called Feedback with Earbuds, and it's a podcast recommendation podcast. And I'll just give you that example of how my show works. It's intro up top. Then I talk a little bit about this week in podcasting. Then I do an interview with somebody. Then I do some more podcast recommendations and then the outro. So we've got a few segments in there and sometimes they change throughout the years. And that's another thing about podcasting is that it's going to be very experimental because you are I hope in it for the long haul, um, because podcasting, like Sash like Sashwa said, is it, it kind of is just taking off, but it also has been around for ten years. So we know some things that work and some things that don't work so much. But ultimately, if you are ready to stick in this for the long term, you're going to be rewarded for that because you're going to learn over time about your audience. You're going to learn over time about the larger landscape and how to take pieces of news and bring them to benefit your individual podcast. Um, so yeah, I, I'm a big fan of letting people know what's going to happen on your show. If you diverge from that, so be it, but let people know why. Um, let's talk a little bit about podcast marketing, because that is one of the other questions that I get. I post a lot of tips on Twitter. And I'm very, very active on Twitter with sharing recommendations for podcasts, both what to listen to, but also how to make your show better. 
and how to market your show. And one of the biggest questions I get is my podcast is great. A lot of people have told me so. Um, and of course that's subjective in and of itself. You obviously need some sort of, you know, unbiased third, third party to let you know, like what, how your podcast is. So I definitely recommend getting an audit somewhere down the line, but that's neither here nor there. How do I actually get my podcast out to the world? And of course, Sashwat touched a little bit on, you know, you record your podcast, whether it's on Squadcast or on Riverside or on Zencaster, or you record your podcast by yourself in Audacity or in GarageBand or on Pro Tools, you edit your show and then you upload it. Where do you upload it? Great. You need a podcast hosting site. So a podcast hosting site is a company like Buzzsprout. It's a, a, a podcast like uh, a company like Simplecast. It's a company like Libsyn, Blueberry. There are so many different podcast hosting sites. And that is essentially where your data is stored on the internet. And that's what then converts it to an RSS feed. Um, and an RSS feed is what you then submit to these distribution channels. And these distribution channels are going to be places like, um, thank you for putting my podcast in there. Uh, the distribution channels are going to be Apple. You're going to want to distribute it to Apple. You're going to want to distribute it separately to Spotify, separately to Stitcher, separately to TuneIn. Basically what Apple podcast does is then many different podcast apps strip their data from Apple. So once you upload your podcast to Apple podcasts, it is already on many other podcast listening apps and you don't need to worry about that. But Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music all require you to submit your RSS feed to them independently. And that's really important to know. But there's kind of this misnomer. A lot of people say, my pot, they'll, they'll spend a lot of space in their bios on Instagram and Twitter saying, my podcast is available on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, CastBox. And it's like, we don't need to know all that because that's a given. Once you distribute your podcast to Apple, it's already on those different places. So I'm a big fan of saying, my podcast is available wherever you get your podcast. Save yourself the space in your bio and on your, your social posts. Um, another, another thing to dispel, there's no such thing really as iTunes anymore for podcasts. It's Apple podcasts. A lot of people say my podcast is available on iTunes. It's not, it's not, don't worry about it anymore, but you will sound old if you say that. All right, back to podcast marketing. How do you actually get your podcast out there? Gone are the days where we used to be able to say my podcast is great. And then maybe it makes it all the way up to the top of the charts just because it's a really great show. That doesn't really happen anymore. Maybe 10 years ago, but now there are so many podcasts out there. There are millions and millions of episodes, but here's the good news. If you do the tiniest bit of marketing, you are ahead of the game because so many people put out their podcast and do absolutely nothing with it. They just, they sit back and they hope, and that's not going to work anymore. So what can you actually do? I'm a big fan of promo swaps. You've probably heard podcasts that before they start, they say, Hey, before we get to this week's episode, I want to tell you about another show that I think you're going to love. I'm the host of the SAS it up podcast. And it's a podcast all about SAS and about companies and about how to get involved in the SAS space. You can listen to it wherever you get your podcasts. All right, let's get to this week's episode. So that's a promo swap. Cause in theory, Sashwat, that that's Sashwat's voice on my podcast, but I would do, he would do the same on, I would do the same on his podcast. So we've swapped. And that means that my audience is getting a taste of his podcast and his audience is getting a taste of my podcast. And that might not be the best overlap because SAS and podcast recommendations are not inherently intertwined, but my, my recommendation, whenever you're starting a podcast is what is your podcast about? Think about 50 to hundred podcasts that are similar, that have similar topic areas that have similar keywords when you're searching for them. And reach out to those podcasts and think about how you want to be connected with them, how you want to collaborate with them. Think about if you want to do a promo swap, if you want to do a social media swap, if you want to have them as a guest on your show and vice versa, if you want to pay for an ad on their show, think about all these ways that you could potentially collaborate with them and reach out to them. Next is working with podcast apps. So people are listening to podcasts on podcast listening apps. Of course, Apple, of course, Spotify. But then, like I mentioned, there are 50 to 100 other podcast listening apps and other ones popping up all the time. And whenever they pop up, they say, we're going to solve the podcast discoverability problem. Spoiler alert, they're probably not going to do that, but they're going to try. And that's great. And your podcast is already on those podcast listening apps, because like I said, they strip their data from Apple. So you want to know, first of all, what your podcast looks like on those podcast listening apps. So 
my recommendation is always download all of those apps or at least look at your podcast on the web version of those apps, search for your show, see what it looks like, claim your show, that's often free. Um, and all you really have to do is verify that your email is the one associated with the RSS. And then you can usually add your social handles and look at the data that your podcast has on that listening app. And in a lot of places, once you claim your show, you can then apply to be featured. So for example, CastBox has a platform, uh, CastBox has a program in place where if you navigate around to a different, if you click on a bunch of links, they kind of hide it, but basically you can apply to have your podcast on their homepage. And my theory, my argument here is that all of the podcast listening apps either have infrastructure in place or non official infrastructure in place where you can apply to have your podcast spotlit or on the feature featured on the homepage. And a lot of these apps have um, paid systems and we could talk about that at another time, but a lot of these apps are looking for content, high quality content with beautiful cover art to have on the homepage of their website because they need content just like you need content. So if you hit these in-app curators and say, hey, I noticed that on your homepage, you don't really feature that many podcasts about SaaS. Would you consider putting my podcast up on the homepage? In exchange, I'd be happy to, at the end of my podcast, say, you can listen to this podcast on CastBox. So it's all about thinking about your collateral, what you have to give, and sort of bartering. The podcast system is very big into bartering. It's thinking about what you have to offer and what you have to gain. I like to approach any pitch with be willing to offer more than you're, be willing to give more than you're willing to take. And I think you'll be rewarded for that in the podcast space and also in life. Um, so working with podcast apps is huge because that is where people are listening. That's where they're going to listen to podcasts. Of course, there's press. I talked a little bit about pitches, be willing to give more than you're willing to take. Um, that's how I approach pitches is how can I help you? Here is a podcast that would be great for your audience. In exchange, I can do X, Y, and Z. So thinking about what exchange you have to give. Um, I'm a big fan of the podcast newsletter scene. I, like I said, run a podcast recommendation newsletter. I know of about 20 other podcast newsletters, whether they're industry newsletters or recommendation newsletters. And again, all of them need content. All of them need to fill um, their issues week after week or day after day, however often. So if you hit them with the right pitch, that's great. So my recommendation there is to subscribe or at least be aware of all of the podcast newsletters out there know what they look like, know what kind of pitches they take, what do they tend to cover. I also recommend following all of the curators of these podcast recommendation newsletters and podcast newsletters on Twitter, because often they will make it really obvious. They'll say, I'm looking for a podcast about X, Y, and Z. And you can say, great, I have that podcast, or I have a friend who has that podcast. Lovely. Paid ads are another thing. I know we kind of need to, to move on, but this is a, it's a lot of information and it's really, really helpful. And I can go in more depth another time. Paid ads, you can pay for ads on podcast listening apps. And that's great because that again is where people are listening to podcasts. I didn't even talk to you yet about how social media is not the best place to spend your time promoting your podcast. It's good to have, social media is important to have because it shows that your podcast is alive and well and that you're producing content and you're reminding the people that follow you that you have a podcast and you have a new episode out, but it doesn't usually convert to help you find new listeners. It's really great for your already existing listeners, but paid ads on podcast listening apps, that is where people are and they're primed and they're ready to listen to podcasts. When I open my podcast listening app and I don't yet know what I'm gonna listen to, I scroll through my homepage and I look at my homepage and I say, huh, what am I gonna listen to today? And if the right podcast hits me at the right time and the cover art is beautiful and the title is beautiful. I'm going to listen to that. I'm going to try it out. So your podcast, if it's there, that's great. You are ready to find some new listeners. So either getting your podcast there through pitching and for free editorial placement in apps is great, but also paying every once in a while is great too. And I have some recommendations as to where you should pay, like CastBox has a great program. They do it based on subscriber uplift, whereas Overcast also has a great program, but they do it based on impressions. So you don't necessarily know how many new listeners you're getting. A lot of information there, but we're gonna move on. <laughs> um, and then this is, our, this is our quote from Maya Angelou. The desire to reach for the stars is ambitious. The desire to reach hearts is wise. Love that quote. Sashwad, I know you added that quote. So do you wanna talk about why you added it? 
Yeah, I think um, uh, especially when you are dabbling with uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, investors, and operators in, in the high performance environment, you realize that they're all amb ambitious. But not a lot of people are really rooting in for the hearts, right? I mean, they're looking for the mind share. But um, if they could be more givers and try to capture the heart share, that would be amazing. Like Adam Grant always talks about the concept that people are there. Are, there are people who are of three kinds, three kinds of people, actually. One are the takers. The second are the matches. And the third are the givers. Givers are the people like Ariel as well, who tends to <laughs> give a lot on the Twitter platform just free of, you know, just for free. So that's an amazing um, you know, thought process or mentality of a professional. And that really helps you in your podcasting journey as well. You'll find a lot of um, uh, uh, givers in, in some of the cohorts, some of the networking uh, uh, channels that you may be part of in the discords as well. And uh, try to, um, you know, uh, make friends with uh, those fellow podcasters and try to, you know, um, um, co-create something together as well. So those were a few of my um, thoughts as well. But yeah, folks, um, if it's okay with you, why don't you switch off your camera and um, uh, just say hello to us and ask some questions. Or if you would yeah, like to know I, something uh, in specific, I will, we are happy to share with you. Yeah, I think um, we gave you a lot of information. I know the podcast landscape, you know, we could, we could have gone into 10 minute segments on each of the different slides that we had more. We could have gone on like each, each of these slides has about an hour of content behind it. You can learn so much from it. And what I really encourage you to do is take what we said and apply it to your own story and think about the questions and the prompts that we posed. Think about how you can take advantage of that. Our contact information is here, both our email addresses and our Twitter handles. Um, check us out. Let us know if you have any questions later after you've had some time to digest. But for now, we'd also love to answer your questions. Uh, and they can be specific. They can be individual. You can ask me, I'm thinking of launching this podcast. Where should I promote it? You can, you can ask me what format do you think I should have based on the type of uh, creator I am. Feel free to open up your mics and ask some individual questions and I will shut up for just a moment. We've got a question. Is that you, Lice? <laughs> yeah, that's me. Let Go me ahead. turn on my camera. Give me a second. Okay. Hello everyone, so good to be here and great content. So thank you very much for this. Uh, so I have a life crisis right now in which um, I've been wanting to start a podcast on community leadership, targeting mm -hmm. people who are already community leaders. But the calling is to make it in Portuguese because I'm from Brazil and there is very little content about communities in Portuguese. But the, pers the population of humans who are community leaders in Portuguese in Brazil is very small for the effort it could take. And then I thought maybe Spanish because um, I also speak Spanish and there's a wider audience. But then once again, English is where I, I personally could benefit the most. Right. But Portuguese, Spanish is where I can contribute the most. So how can I maybe make a decision here? Where should I start, start from? And how can I make it bilingual or trilingual if that's possible? That's a really, really good question. And I commend you already for thinking about where your content can actually make a difference because a lot of people start podcasts without doing the proper research into, does this topic already exist or is somebody already doing this? So thank you for doing that. I think that's huge. That's a big step. So the first thing I would think about is, you know, there are systems out there that will translate your content. Um, Veritonic, is a really cool program that is doing AI voice simulation. So I would check them out. It might be expensive, but it also might be the type of thing that they're interested in trying out with you. So I would look into that. There's a lot of synthetic voice. So for example, there's this newsletter that I follow called Sounds Profitable. Um, I'm the co-host of the Sounds Profitable podcast, but the newsletter is about podcast ad tech and just general podcast systems that are in place that, that are thinking about the future of podcasting. And one of the articles that came out recently is that it, the whole system is run by this guy named Brian Marletta. He's based in Texas. He speaks English. He does not speak Spanish. But now, not only is the newsletter being translated into Spanish every week because there's a lot of um, movement in the Spanish-speaking side of podcasting, but also his voice is being synthetically made into a Spanish speaker. It's amazing. It's the coolest thing. And he doesn't even speak it. It's called Veritonic. I think the actual... Um, 
Veritonic is the, or it's Veritone One, I'm sorry. Veritone One is the company and then within them is Marvel.ai. So just something to think about. Um, I mean, I, if I were you, I would probably speak to community leaders in English now. And I think your unique insight there is that you, you are based in, in Brazil, right? Yeah, so that, yeah, that's already, yeah. I'm in between Brazil and New York City. But. That is already um, unique in and of itself. You have that unique insight of being there. Um, and then over time, maybe you translate it, maybe you don't, but maybe you make all of your show notes available in Portuguese, or maybe you write your blogs in Portuguese, you know, making it, making there be some element of international language um, just available to people, especially in your hometown, home city. And um, I think that's a good way to go about it, but I'll, I'll let Sashwat add to that. Sure. I think, um, uh, Lise, I'm a fan of your work in the community space per se. And, uh, um, and I have also done a little, little bit of research on the podcasting listenership for, from various countries. So apart from the US and UK and other, other countries, you know, Brazil has a huge listenership as well. So I would not discount uh, the Portuguese language, right? I mean, of course, I would, um, if I were to design the pod strategy for you, then A, I will have that um, one episode in English and maybe a similar, the same kind of episode or the same kind of conversations or a translation of that uh, episode in your voice in Portuguese as well. And I will release that as like episode one and episode two with, with definitive show notes as well. Because what will happen is that at least your um, Portuguese sp speakers would love to hear in Portuguese, even if they can understand English, they would love to hear it in Portuguese. And if you look into the anal analytics, you will realize, and if you dig deep into the analytics uh, via any of the platforms, you will realize that there's a high possibility when you do in your uh, Portuguese language, you will find people from uh, Brazil listening into more. So, um, so I'll design, um, you know, airtight pod strategy. And in that, uh, and one of the idea that just came to me on the top of my head is this one, having two episodes, one is in English and second, the translated uh, in Portuguese with your own voice in it. Yeah. Appreciate that. I have more follow-up questions, but I'll leave it to the others and maybe join your course in January because I have to continue <laughs> talking about it. All right. Thank Thanks, you, Lais. Let's go to Ramsri. Hi, Saswata and Ariel. Uh, I have a question about paid marketing and paid promotions. So for example, I want to know like if let's say a YouTuber has 50K audience, and then you want to do paid promotions, how does the transaction usually look like and what are the ticket sizes? So I just want to know in general, how do those uh, numbers look like and also the workflow look like, lo looks like, yeah. You're, you're thinking about paid YouTube ads, is that right? Uh, let's say someone has a paid podcast, uh, then if I want to promote something on there, it could be my SaaS or something else. How does the transaction look like and sure. what the prices are? What the prices yeah, are. yeah. So if I'm understanding correctly, you there's a podcast that you want to get your product in front of. Right. Okay. Yeah. So a few things. So first of all, I would think about if you have money to spend, that's great. Do you know about the CPM model? Uh, not really. Okay. So CPM is clicks per milli. It's essentially how many, uh, it's a, essentially a dollar amount that corresponds with every a thousand downloads. So you would ask the person that you want to buy an ad from, you would say to them, um, what's your CPM? And they would tell you it is but somewhere between usually 25 and $55 per, per a thousand listeners. And then you would ask them how many about how many listeners do you get within a 30 day period of an episode being released? And they might tell you 7,000. So then it is that number times seven, right? Um, so that's, that's generally how it works, but the number could go up or down based on how, how perfect your product is for that audience. So they might charge you more because, um, maybe it's not the best fit or they might charge you less because it's an incredible, uh, it, the, it makes a lot of sense for their audience and they're, they see that, it, that it's adding value and therefore they're gonna charge you a little bit less because it's not the biggest pull on their part. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. 
Awesome. So that's, that's how I would go about that. But another thing to do is like, you could always say, I want to underwrite your entire next season so that I get a shout out at the top and the bottom of every one of your episodes. And you could say, I want to pay a, a flat fee of $5,000 for that. And they, right. they'll say yes or no, because some people like the option of having all the money up front, even if maybe they're going to get more listeners than, than you could have predicted. Maybe they're just happy to get the money up front. Got so it. really, I think the, the main takeaway from this is there are no rules. There's not, there's not like um, one specific way to go about this but you should know all of your options so that you can hit them with like, I want to do this or this or this or this. Um, what are you willing to, what are you willing to take from me? And then another thing is if you have your own podcast, maybe you do swaps instead. Maybe you, you do collateral exchanges rather than money. Right. Got it. And, right. and adding on to Ariel, uh, because Ramshi, you have interacted a bit during our Maven cohort as well. So I have a little bit of context around the course that you are building. So, um, you know, there's a saying that, of course, the beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. So similarly, the value lies in the ears of the listener. So you should not go always when you are talking, uh, talking about, you know, uh, the high tech AI and stuff like that. The content is super rich and it is of high quality as well. So you can actually charge a premium and those numbers may not be aligned to the CPM uh, model as well. So you can actually have a higher value based on the proposal of the sales uh, structure you do. So you can go about uh, and tell that your content is of so-and-so value because it caters to so-and-so people and um, it has higher dollar value as well. So you are charging for more, et cetera. So that could be one of the ways as well. Hope that helps. Great, great. Thanks a lot for the answers. Yes. So it looks like we've got two more questions. We're gonna go to Anne first and then we will go to Neha and then we're gonna wrap it up. Um, and take a picture, hopefully, before we go. All right, go ahead, Anne. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, so I am an engineer. I actually have a PhD in engineering. However, this podcasting thing is wrecking my head. It is very, it's very difficult for someone my age to figure out how to start like when, when when Ariel when you said okay this might be basic uh you know podcast 101 I was like no 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 over here <laughs> that's why that's why I gave it you know so for two, yeah. two weeks now I don't know if that's a long time or not I have been trying to figure out very basically almost what you went through Ariel like how do you get this started right. it doesn't really exist out there it doesn't exist for someone my age, who happens to be technical, but not video game savvy. It's a different mm -hmm. type of technical, even the lingo. Um, do you know of anything out there that can help someone like me interested, if for no other reason, I'm old enough that I have stuff to share. Yeah. But right now, you are my last hope. My niece said, you know what? It's on Friday morning, 10 o'clock, do it. And I said, after that, excuse me, but like F this, this is just, yeah, like no, I'm long. glad you're here. I need to know a little bit more and I don't know if we have time for it right now, but what, what, what do you want the show to be about? It's about girls and engineering and, cool. and is it an interview show? A lot of it is stuff that I've learned over the years. I already have videos made. It's, it's a really low tech way to explain to girls in high school and their parents and high school teachers that engineering is not just for guys. Sorry, Seth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that there's cosmetic engineering, people that make toys, people that make cookies, people that make beer. They're all engineers. They're not okay. just the. Well, here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Take my information. I just put the slide back up. But essentially, what you should do is write down a list of the people that you want to have on your show. Write down a list of topics that you want to talk about on your show. Those are going to be your episodes. Don't worry so much about having a show forever. Think about eight episodes that you want to, that you want to touch in your first season. Think about a name. Think about the format. You don't necessarily need to write your intro and your outro right now, but it could be as simple as, hi, I'm Anne. I love engineering. You should too. Let's get into today's show. You know, that's just a very basic. Uh, today, we're talking to this person who didn't think she could be an engineer, but she's an engineer now. All right, let's get into our conversation. Great. You've done that conversation. Outro. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed. You can find my information here. You can find their information there. Great episode one. That's it. That's it. Not that hard. 
but all the other stuff of uh, sure. yeah the so you uploading mean, the rss feed oh oh we can help you with that. so okay so for now i would recommend going to buzzsprout.com slash blog okay they have incredible resources to get started and youtube videos if you want to if you prefer watching uh, and a podcast called buzzcast so that should help you a lot Re watch some of their stuff read some of their videos or read some of their blogs and then let me know if you have any questions and then consider joining our course in January. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, of course. Thank Thanks you. Job, Thank you for joining way. us today. And I really hope this helped and that you're not going to give up because I think you're going to tell an important story. No, really. I'm, I'm back in. That's Good. why, I, that's why I, I, I have no makeup on, barely brushed my hair. And I thought, you know what? I got to shout out. Hell yeah. Thank you. All right. Neha. Hi guys, um, Ariel and Sashwat, thank you so much for today's session. Um, you know, in a very little time, you gave a lot of knowledge and uh, really appreciate that. Uh, now to, to, the, my, to my question, um, I'm starting my podcast. I'm releasing my trailer tomorrow and I'm feeling a, a little overwhelmed. And um, I have basically two questions. One is while recording my monologue, I realized that I'm forgetting a lot of stuff because I'm trying to be too accurate about what I have written uh, as in the script. And even once if, if it's going here and there, even even one word, I'm, I'm getting disturbed because of it. So that's one that's about a monologue and um, about dialogue. Now I have a recording session tomorrow planned with my first guest and uh, he is someone that I admire and uh, you know, so I'm a little scared where, wherein I shouldn't come off as a fangirl <laughs> while recording a session. Yeah. Because uh, I this is this is gonna be my, be my first episode, so I wanna um, you know I wanna yeah. establish my authority in the podcast, right? Uh, if I'm saying it right. Yeah. But yeah, these are two okay, questions. Okay, I have I'll... a few. I have a few quick tips for you. The first mm -hmm. one is for your monologue. It's gonna take time to get it down. Okay. For you to feel comfortable with looking at your script, but then also pulling in your own improv, it's going to just take some time. So don't okay. beat yourself up about it. Don't think, oh, it doesn't come naturally to me. It doesn't come naturally to anybody. It takes time. It takes time Got to it. be able to read a script and also be able to think on your feet. So what I would do with that is just rely on your editing abilities, rely on the ability for you. Say a few different things. Say, try, try it. In saying it word for word, try then taking that word for word, internalizing it and saying it from memory, try a combination of both, and then edit that together to be what you want it to sound like for your first few. And then you can revisit that in a few months and, and redo it with the, with the knowledge now that you know what you're talking about. You're confident in this. This is your story to tell. Therefore, you know about it. Therefore, you can do your own improv and, and have a nice combination of reading and looking off of the paper. As for your dialogue, I would, if you can today, interview somebody else. Interview okay. somebody else who is not this person. Jump on the phone with somebody, make it the same kind of interview and really try to think about your transitions and your flow of the conversation and how do you move from one question to the other, but really just shake the nerves away by interviewing somebody else entirely. And another mm -hmm. thing that you can do is before you get started with your interview with this person that you are a fangirl of, you can say to them, hey, I'm a little bit nervous. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I might, I might mess up, but that's okay because this is edited. And this is often the advice that I give to somebody when they are nervous to be on my podcast. I say, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. If you mess up, you can always say, um, Ariel, I hated that. Please delete it. Bye, ladies. Thank you so much for joining. Um, and then, and then I, and then we know that it's a recorded conversation, so I can edit that out. So you can even tell that to yourself, and you can say that out loud to this person, so that they know that you're that that you're working on this, and that they can also feel comfortable saying whatever they want, because you're gonna edit it, and you you know even if it comes off completely awkwardly, you can always say, "This is okay. I can revisit this in a few months. Worst comes to worst, you don't have to put it out." You know, so I think that's, that's a big part of it. It's on demand. It is not something that goes live right away. Um, if you have more questions, please join us in our session or let's connect online. Um, we're a little bit over time and I know we really wanted to uh, end early. Um, so let's see if we have anything left to do. We don't. 
Um, let's take a quick picture if you guys are available to um, everybody go on screen. Sasha, do you want to take it? Yeah, I'm just taking it right away. One, two. Thank you for Thanks, showing your Ramsay. cameras, everybody. Thanks, folks, for joining in. And uh, we are really grateful for your time and uh, hope to connect with you on Twitter or any other digital platforms as well. All right. Have a great take rest care. of your day, everybody. Happy weekend. Great. Bye.